Hello, everybody. Uh, it's been a while, I know. I keep saying that. Uh, I really, really want to start doing more stuff, but uh, life gets in the way. Someone asked me uh, to do a tutorial in Unity on how to have a character uh, pick up and throw a ball. So the ball initially would be controlled by the animation of the character, and then when you release the ball, it would be controlled by the Unity physics engine. So let's go ahead and test this scene here. So you see he's doing just that. Okay, I can reposition these wall objects here so that you can see a little bit better that, in fact, the, the physics engine is taking over here. All right, let's try it again. Okay, you can see that when I change the positions of the objects that that is not a canned animation, that the ball is, in fact, uh, reacting to the environment. Okay, so let's take a little quick look at uh, how I did this. And I have not done anything in Unity for quite some time, and it's actually changed quite a bit. So uh, there's probably people out there going to watch this tutorial and say, oh, there's better ways of doing this. This is just one way of doing it. There's probably a bunch of different ways of doing this. Uh, but it's actually fairly simple once you get it set up, and uh, let's go ahead and dive into this way of doing it. So what I did first was I created a character in Blender, in this case, uh, called the Human Figure here, and I created um, that throwing motion. So when you uh, copy this character into your Assets folder, it will automatically show up here in Assets. And as you can see here, uh, things are quite a bit different from before, and uh, if you want to go ahead and select that character, You'll see a little preview of them here. Very nice. And if you click on this little uh, play button next to it, it actually expands everything about that character. So you can see if this file, for example, came from Blender. I'm not sure about uh, what it would look like if it came from Maya or something else. Uh, probably very similar. Uh, you have your armature. You have your object, which I forgot to rename. It's still called Cube. And then you have a couple of these animation takes. And as you can see here, it will play the animation. In this case, that was like an overhead or underhanded anime, throwing animation, all right? Okay, so uh, what we need to do is we need to, um, we just uh, go ahead, drag that guy into the scene like we have here. And then we're gonna need, um, we're going to need to be able to attach a script to a certain point of the animation. Uh, now in the past you've seen, I've done that in the animation window. And just like in my previous uh, uh, tutorials, what you need to do is, if you select these animations here, you'll notice that everything here is grayed out because all the animations attached to the character initially are read-only. So what you need to do is select it and go to Edit and Duplicate it. Then you can rename it. As you can see here, I had renamed that. And it says that, okay, it won't do the preview until I drag that guy in there okay okay I renamed that uh, throwing anime throwing animation edited okay now you can see that it live it, it um, activates and I can go ahead and manipulate it um, to get this animation also attached to the character to actually run it to actually have the scene run the animation go to window animator not animation but animator looks like this and this state window comes up. All right, so you can just drag this thing into here. All right, and as long as it will, uh, as long as it's highlighted in orange here, that will be the current animation that will play. All right, now obviously, as your character goes through its different states, you're going to have the animations going back and forth. Uh, but right now, we just need one animation for this. All right, so we have um, we have duplicated our animation and we drag it into the animator window to activate the animation in, in the scene. Uh, now let's go ahead and select that animation. Or I'm sorry, we actually go to our hierarchy of our scene and select the character. And then we go to window. Now we go to animation, which is command six. All right. And the animation window comes up. And hopefully we have, yes, we have the, uh, if you have multiple animations, just select the one you want to work with. And then this is really nice. They've changed this quite a bit since the last time I looked. And as you can see here, it, it not only imports the animation, but it retains all of the keyframes. And I think you can, yeah, you can retime all the keyframes, all the Blender keyframes of the animation. You can mess with your timing right inside of Unity. 
pretty nice. So basically what you do is just, um, with that animation selected, you just drag through here, and then you go find the point where you want the ball to be released, all right? You see here that we've already got one, a point. Oh, I, you know what, I actually forgot, we have to add a script first. So select your figure here, and as you can see here, I've already created a script. I call that script thrower. And if we look at that script, it's extremely simple. Uh, it has one uh, variable, which just refers to the game object, which is that ball. And it has one function. And don't worry about debug.log. Uh, all it does is find that ball. Uh, or, I'm sorry, find the script attached to that ball and calls its release me function, which we're going to write later. All right. So go back to the animation window. Uh, find the point where you want to attach that and right click and say add animation event and then you can select that function whatever function you want all right and that will be done we can delete that one all right so it's called throw ball that's the function so once the uh, animation gets to this point it's going to call that function all right and I already showed you what that does all right so the next thing we need to do is we need to create a, uh, a ball so all you have to do is, in this case, create, go to create game object other, and then you can create a sphere. Uh, and then all I did to the sphere was I added a material to it so we could easily see it rolling around. Um, the other thing that's important to add is a rigid body. So you go add a component, oops, got to do it from here. Add component physics and rigid body. And you can leave all the defaults. Uh, except you probably want to change the mass. I made it a little bit heavier. I think it's one by default. So if we do this as a mass of one, let's take a look at it. It's probably going to go extremely fast. Whoa, it went so fast it went through the wall. So let's do a mass of five. So as you can see, it changes quite a bit. Let's do a mass of, so he's going to be basically throwing like a, a bowling ball here. <laughs> so as you can see here it's very different depending on what you end up doing with the mass okay all right that's pretty good okay um, like I said uh, all the defaults there and then go ahead onto this uh, sphere or ball or whatever uh, create a script and drag it onto it in this case it's called ball script okay and as you can see here I've actually got a few variables and stuff that are not needed here. I was messing around with some things. Uh, basically, all you need is a variable that refers to the parent object. I call it parent bone in this in this uh, version, and a variable that refers to the rigid body of this sphere of this ball. Then, at the beginning of its its life cycle, start the start function. It comes in it, bundled with all these scripts. All I do is I automatically uh, constrain it. Uh, parent it to that um, the hand. Uh, actually, it's parented to an empty that's uh, attached to the hand, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, and then um, I turn off the gravity on the rigid body. All right, use gravity is false. Transform dot parent equals parent bone dot transform. Uh, rigid uh, dot use gravity equals false. Okay. And uh, well, anyway, I'll show you how I populate those in a second. The next thing is the function which we called from inside the animation window. Uh, in this case, I'm calling that function release me. And then I just simply kind of do it in reverse. I say transform.parent equals null. So now it's not parented to the hand. And the rigid body, I tell it to use gravity. <clears throat> All right. Uh, then the next thing I do is um, we need it to point in the same direction that the um, parent object was pointed in when it was released so that it will fly off in the same direction. And to do that, I just set the transform rotation to the parent object's transform.rotation. Then uh, to the rigid body, we add a force. And the direction of the force is transform.forward. And we multiply that by whatever variable you want to, um, which whatever seems realistic to you. In this case, it turned out to be 2000. Okay. Uh, the one last thing we need to do in this scene is if we expand this guy here and I know that this is actually <clears throat> the left hand that's throwing the ball if we expand this guy uh, you will see that I've actually the ball is not actually constrained to the hand 
but to this empty, which is parented to the hand. And the reason why I did that is, for one thing, you can see the center of gravity of this hand is actually up near the wrist, and also the axes are pointing in a way that makes sense for the hand, but wouldn't make sense for the ball object being thrown. All right, so if we were to parent into this, the ball would snap up here instead of realistically where the palm of the hand is. So by putting the empty object in there and acting as kind of like the actual target, uh, we're able to kind of give it some separation, an offset. And also I'm able to point this thing in the direction that I want it to go uh, when it releases. So as you can see here, I just kind of just rotated this around until I got the axes, as you can see them pointing this way, that yellow axis kind of where it's going to fly off at, uh, pointing in the direction of the wall where I want it to go. All right. And so that's pretty much uh, it. Um, also, you know, the ball, uh, once I've created all these objects and stuff, just drag those items onto the uh, ball script. For example, the parent object, parent bone object in this case, is this empty, so you just drag that on there. And then the rigid uh, body is actually this rigid body here, so you can just drag it onto there, the rigid body that comes with that ball object. Okay, so brief rundown. Brief overview, rather. Uh, create a character in Blender, uh, give it an animation. Open up this little guy, oops, by clicking on that. Uh, select the animation and duplicate it. Then select the animation and go into your animation window. Oops, sorry, I don't have the guy selected. Okay, and then find the spot where you want the ball to be released, and then right click, add the animation event, select the function, and then just drag your scripts onto the characters, uh, create your ball object, uh, add a rigid body to it, add the script to it, uh, create the empty object uh, parented to the hand, pointing the direction you want to point at, and that's pretty much it. So that's the bare basics of uh, doing something like this. It may seem a little bit complex because there's just a lot of different steps, but actually it's, you know, for something that complex to have something uh, dynamic and then non-dynamic at the same time is, uh, or constrained to animation, uh, you know, it's pretty nice to be able to do that kind of thing. So I hope that this tutorial helps you out.